Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to discuss types and examples of research in different areas or fields. For practical research 1, mga pala sa teacher C, secondary school teacher 2 of Angeles City Senior High School, Schools Division of Angeles City. So, let's start! <laughs> Examples of research in different areas of or fields. So here's the subject code, and at the same time, the reference book that I'll be using for this lesson. So let's start with our objectives. We have three objectives for this lesson: different types and examples of research, two approaches to ethnography, and types of case studies. So the first question is. What are the things you could learn about your surroundings using qualitative research? You may post this video and write your answer in the comment section down below. Then let's start with types and examples of research. So first we have applied research, wherein it is designed to solve practical problems of the modern world rather than to acquire knowledge for knowledge's sake. Its goal is to improve human condition. Second, it is used to find solutions to everyday problems, correct illnesses, and develop technologies. Third, some aims of this type of research is to improve agricultural crop production, treat or cure a specific disease, and to improve the energy efficiency of homes, offices, or modes of trans transportation. So basically, Applied research is used to, let's say we have a problem like right now, like the pandemic. Okay. Uh, you can call it as an applied research because may problem tayo, basically na meron sa paligid natin as of now, and the result of the research is the vaccine. Okay, so basically that is, uh, that is applied research. You are doing something not because you want to know about it, but rather there is a problem because of that something and you will do, do a solution for that. That is a type research. Or, let's say it's a normal setup. Maraming, uh, maraming nag drop out sa school. So, uh, if you want to create a program, you should first look if there is really a problem at the school. Then, you will create a program, then look at the result of the program. That is what we call um, applied research also okay? then basic research referred to as fundamental or peer research is driven by scientist curiosity or in interest in scientific question the main motivation is to extend man's knowledge not to create or invent things fourth this research is designed to add an organized body of scientific knowledge and does not necessarily produce results of practical value basically this one when say basic research uh, if you want to know something new, okay, like for example, some makahanap ng bagong element or chemistry, okay, basically sa chang gagawin mo. If you, if you are curious, let's say, um, bakit, bakit ganun kabilis yung mama ng mga Chinese, for example, okay, that is part of basic research already. Then correlational research, it refers to the systematic investigation or statistical study of relationships among two or more variables without necessar necessarily determining cause and effect. And second, it seeks to establish a relationship or so association between two or more variables that uh, readily lend themselves to experimental manipulation. Okay, like for example, this one, um, they want to see what's the relationship between variable A with variable B, like for example, academic performance of students and their attendance, okay, or academic performance of students with their gender, academic performance and their age, okay, pwede rin naman na academic performance of their gender and age, okay, there would be a relationship between those two, so that is what we call correlational research. Now, let's talk about descriptive research. 
It refers to research that provides an accurate portrayal of the class or individual situation or group. Second, it is also known as statistical research. Third, the study studies are a means of discussing new meanings, describe what exists, determine the frequency with which something occurs or categor categorizing information. Third, it collects many notes from, from a detailed study. And last, it details with everything that can be counted and measured and which has an impact on people or communities. So here in descriptive research, we talk about statistics. We talk about numbers. Let's say, um, um, birth rate in the Philippines compared to its previous, okay? So, makita that the statistics of the hospitals, you can create a bigger picture how is the population in the Philippines growing, okay? Or, possible is against the school dropout rate, possible yan, in correlation to the applied research na gagawin. Let's talk about ethnographic research. This is a very interesting qualitative research. First, it refers to the investigation of a culture through an in-depth study of the members of the culture. It involves a systematic collection, description, and analysis of data on development of theories of cultural behavior. Second, it studies people, ethnic groups in their setting. And last, this kind of research attempts to understand what is happening nationally in the setting and to interpret the data gathered so implications can be formed from this data. If you are watching documentaries, okay, the like eyewitness, okay, um, the reporter there tries to leave, for example, say they not to lie to see the lives of those who are living under bridge. Okay? So that is basically ethnographic research. You will, as a researcher, do what they are doing. Okay, you will live how they live, so that you would understand how the culture is okay yung iba like for example if they want to study about itas they will live with the tribe okay ganon ang ethnographic research experimental research it is an objective systematic controlled investigation for the purpose of predicting and controlling phenomena and examining probability and causality among selected variables best establish cause and effect relationships this type of research studies the effect of the variables on each other when say experimental research it's not just on a laboratory setting okay like for example you would like to be uh, to, to do a research about your intervention if you're a teacher you would apply one class na walang intervention what you call the control group and the second group or what you call the experimental group would apply the intervention okay that's experimental research then you will see the cause and effect of that particular intervention kung meron ba siyang eto o wala okay it's not just for laboratory like for example you will add salt on just chemical what will happen so and so forth okay maraming uh, maraming pwedeng gawing experiments not just in the laboratory and exploratory research this type conducted for a problem that has not been clearly defined it helps determine the best research design data collection method and selection of subjects it can be informal relying on secondary research such as review available literature and or data it is not typically generalizable to the population at large so, if there is a new phenomenon happening around and you want to understand it, you expert first. Okay? Kasi, um, kung bago yan, there is no definite research design to be used, there is no definite data collection method to be used, and how will you select your, your participants? So, you explore it first using exploratory research. Malalaman mo kung paano mo siya dapat gawin in a better research pro, uh, research proposal okay? and you cannot generalize it basically because you're just exploring as a common moment 
story and research. It is an in, it is one involving analysis of events that occurred in the remote or recent past. It can show patterns that occurred in the past and over time, which can help to see where we can came from and what kind of solutions we have used in the past. And last, understanding this can add perspective on how we examine current events and additional practices. Okay, so basically, uh, let's say archaeologist ka, you're doing historical research, basically. To see, let's say, nakadiscover ka ng isang uh, archaeologist, you discovered a ruin, for example. And you will study the markings on the ruins, how the culture was built. Kasi wala na yung mga tao. So pag-aaralan mo na lang siya based on the evidences that you have. Okay. Or, let's say, uh, sa medicine, ginagawa din to. Like, like what happened with the current pandemic. Okay. Pinag-aaralan nila paano nag-spread, bakit yung pakamilis mag-spread in comparison to previous pandemics in the past. Pinakamalapit nilang na compare is the Spanish flu. Okay. So, with that, in mind that is historical research already. Phenomenological research. So it is an inductive descriptive research developed from phenomenological philosophy. Its aim is to describe an ex- experience that is lived by the person, it is concerned with the study of experience from the perspective of the individual emphasizes the importance of a personal perspective and interpretation. This type of research is powerful for understanding subjective experience, gaining insights into people's motivation and actions, and last, the researcher is in this type of research attempts to understand one or more individual's experience of a phenomenon by one or more individuals. Okay, in comparison with the ethnographic research. Okay. Um, so ethnographic research, you as a researcher will experience what is happening with your participants. In short, you are the participant, okay? And you are just trying, and you're trying what your subjects are doing, okay? In phenomenological research, it's the other way around. Researcher, you interpret by basically hearing out the experiences of the person, okay? You observe ang ginagawa nila, okay? Like, um, like what we did on our entry for the division, um, division, first division research congress of the students, what we did is a phenomenological study of the work experience ng mga senior high school students at my previous school, sa Pambata National High School. Um, kami lang ang gumawa ng phenomenological research and it was a good research and they found out different factors that can be can be improved once they once we applied the um, ano dito? immersion program the next year which happened fortunately before the pandemic first okay, this is 27, uh, 2018 okay 2018 year research. So recently lang siya. Okay. Um, ang gagawin mo dun is you will interview or focus with uh, your subjects or your participants. Then you ask them about their experiences on your topic. Then you will uh, interpret all their inputs. Actually, research. Okay, ito. Medyo and to, um, marami tong impact sa mga teachings. It involves the application of the steps, the scientific methods, and the classroom problems. This type of research is done on a limited, very limited scope. The population to the study is not so big. This type of research is helpful to beginning researchers. So, sa amin, sa academia, okay, or what we call in the education field, we do action research. So, we will look at the problems and of the classroom, then we try to solve that problem. Okay. It's an applied research, basically. Okay. So, two approaches to ethnographic research or ethnography. So, first, realist 
researcher provides an objective account of the situation. Okay, Logophia, what's the pagrealist ka? What is happening around you? Okay, if you are a critical researcher, shows his advocacy for a marginalized group or attempts to empower the group by giving it voice. Okay, um, mayroon tayong mga documentaries na ganito. Sometimes they are realist, sometimes they are critical. Okay, depende doon sa topic nila. If they just want to show what is happening on that particular subject, they are realist. But let's say, um, advocacy siya like, um, for the farmers. Okay, pinapakita nila yung buhay ng mga farmers at bakit hindi sila natutulungan. That is critical researcher. That is, those are the two ways that how to apply ethnographic research or approaches for ethnographic research. Then types of case study. So we have three kinds of case study. The first one is intrinsic case study, wherein it is conducted to understand a particular case that may be unusual or unique. So isang tao lang or isang grupo lang, titingnan mo kung sila yung kakaiba, bakit may nangyayari ganito. You study them. Okay, sila lang, not in relation to the others. The second is instrumental case study. It represents some other issues under study and the researcher believes that this case can provide additional insights into that issue. So, um, meron siyang pinag-aaral pang isang case or isang particular uh, part of the case that can help understand the main issue. Okay, so para siya may sub-case study. While multiple or collective case study uses several cases selected to further understand and investigate a phenomenon, population, or general condition. So you have a single problem, a single research, but there are multiple cases that you are doing okay, with the same topic, with the same questions to better understand what you are studying. And what kind of research? The question here is, what kind of research do you want to do? Okay, so this is part of the last part, last part of our lesson. So you may post this video and make your answer in the comments um, below. So with that, thank you for your time, and I hope you learned something about you, about our topic for today. See you again next time.